a setting. But to be honest, like right now, I'm more into our Q's draft than Fireflux. They do have a couple key picks, which the, the last two picks could be the make it or break it for the team comp. Uh, but again, there's just there's so much open uh, right now. They need to start targeting the gold lane. I mean, they could target the gold lane. Sunshine's actually been a, a complete menace. I do like the the Valentina ban, though. I mean, that could be that they're going to be picking some heroes that they just don't want the mid lane to be stolen. I mean, Nana still available, so yeah. I, you have some good picks. You have Vexana. Um, like RQ still has a, a lot of loaded picks available. They also need to ban on the side of RQ. On the side of Fireflux, we still need a jungler. We still yeah. need a gold lane. So RQ going to kind of hammer into the gold lane since they've already picked up Claude. We take out the Brody. I mean, we take out the Bruno. Maybe we take out the Ixia, something like that. Maybe we, I mean, the, uh, what else? The Clint's become kind of popular. I think it's been more of just uh RQ picking it up a little bit in the past, or AP Bren has actually picked it up as well. That that's another gold lane pick that has, that has kind of sky rocketed <laughs> in. There goes the Vixana ban. Um, so this leaves RQ with just. I mean, the the there Nolan. goes the Nolan ban. Fireflux will get first pick here though, right? And both teams still need a jungler. Does Fireflux finally commit and go for the joy here? I I mean to be honest, that that would be a good. Ab a good hero to be able to catch the claw. They need something that can definitely pierce the back line because you're going to have to, you're going to be dealing with that claw quite a bit. And depending on what mage is picked up here, which fair miss is still technically open. So if they, if they opted to go fair miss, oh. RQ would just be a tanky, a tanky comp. And I mean, it would, it would scale really well with the Claude and the Benedetta. So, I mean, there, there's still, again, uh, Nana definitely has one of the highest win rates, so that could still be picked on the field. The Fredrin being picked up, it's good. I mean, they need a little bit of a heavier front line, I would say. The Ruby, you got the Ruby and the Fred, but these next picks, I think, are gonna be pretty crucial for Fireflux. I mean, overall, Fireflux, you know, pretty simple. A little bit of a front to back, not too divey overall. RQ gonna pick up Bosh, the Basha yeah. here. Keeping things simple, not putting, not risking too much. I feel like both teams just taking a pretty Aurora. safe approach to it all. And there's the Aurora pick. I think a lot yeah. of us expected to see more Aurora this uh, this tournament. Um, she did take some slight changes, you know, from, uh, from where we saw her before into the tournament and everything. So I think I was kind of surprised when we didn't see as much of her, but she still has been viable. She still has made some crazy plays in the playoffs. So in the hands of Okta, excited is how it goes. I knew the carry was about to come next. Just they have a tanky setup here with the Bashia pick into the jungle, the carry into the back line. You got two back line heroes, solid, solid back line peel and then a good frontal fence. So we'll see. RQ against Fire Flux. This is going to be an interesting match. I, I still personally, even with the boxing and the Aurora pick, even though I think I would rather have seen like a fair miss or uh, something like that, but they're, they're, I guess they're going a little bit more aggressive. So I still like RQ's comp. I do think Fire Flux could fight back here though. All right. Let's get it started because we are about to jump into the land of dawn for the third place match, the first game of the last day of Game of Future. This is going to be RRQ Rex Regum Kaon up against Fireflux Esports. I'm excited to see how this goes. Lay us down, G. What do you think the win cons are? Who do you think's got the early game? Because we got plenty of time to talk <laughs> with a quick pause has that mobility and can avoid the ruby but we're gonna be getting back into the game for right. second time here <laughs> well let's get it trex let's let's see what actually goes down kind of wanted to know what was uh really causing some issues there but hey Ooh, tnz hitting him with the the <laughs> the, the fade man the glacier <laughs> that's what i was the saying fade. Oh man, that bro. He is. Aurora, the, the CC from Aurora is honestly insane. This is one of the reasons why I, I expected to see a bit more of her. With the way that the meta is right now and how reliant so many comps are on 
heavy CC. You're having three, sometimes four heroes mm -hmm. that all have some sort of lockdown, all have some sort of freeze, all have some sort of immobility. Um, it's just huge, and she she plays very well to it. Nice Ooh. knock up coming from Brusco. Going to try to lock on to Tianzi. Tianzi takes a lot of damage from the Electo final blow. And Banana able to get the kill. Alien. Still in the midst of things. Rosa coming in as well, but Arad able to take the first turtle of this game. Okta goes down, though. Rosa able to pick up the kill. Arad now moving on to the next, but Alien finds another one. Brusco goes down, so it's a two for two. Turtle over to the side of our queue, though. That was probably the most dramatic death I've ever seen in Alien. Kind of in a little trouble. Do we see Banana? Ooh. I don't think it, the Banana doesn't have an ultimate. But they're still coming out at him. What is this aggression? Arad gets pulled back with the I'm offended. Taking a lot of damage. Alien going to be able to pick up the kill. Apex 47 may go down for this. Uses a little bit of bush work. Alien taking a bit of damage as well. They're duking it out already. Alien Ooh. able to get back under the tower to safety with a hop and a skip. I like it. It's 3-3. Three, three, gold at a standstill. The style play is coming from Alien right there. Definitely, definitely great to see. 3-3. Three, three, both teams are at it. Banana, though, overstaying their welcome a bit. Able to get out of there with the ultimate, though. Again, this is huge. I mean, for both sides of the team, they're not letting up. This is something we see occasionally that they, they both teams just want aggression early or early on. And again, this is what you were saying earlier. This is, I feel like, going to stop the steamroll from both sides. Is You just got to keep them at bay. But TNZ want to fight. I mean, they're, they're definitely going at it. We're 3-3 three, three right now, about four minutes in. Next turtle is going to be up in 30 seconds. Now, Banana and Alien both have not taken a death yet. They're both doing great in their respective EXP lane. Ooh. And I think... Oh my god, the damage from both of them. I love this meta of EXP laners right now. It's not your old school, bulky, never ending fight. These guys are moving and they are aggressive. A little bit of action up in the top side as well. A nice meteor connects onto Skylar. They get brought, brought down to about half health. Tianzi going to take a glacier to the face. Frozen up there. Both teams deciding to disengage. At this point, I feel like RQ might want to do something against Alien. They're, they're definitely a back and forth battle happening down in the EXP lane, but if they're able to scale with the CC, it could be a little bit of a problem for Okta and even possibly Skylar. So we'll see first turtle. Well, the second turtle happening right now. We'll have to see. I mean, Banana is ready. Look at holding the mid bush here to possibly Catch CC on the rotate, but Alien reads it very well. Who's going to get banana the does here, have the, uh, Banana has the Petrify ready to go. I'm excited to see Banana try to make the play into the backside. Alien able to zone away Brusco here. The damage is already starting to connect up. Apex 40 comes in, but a nice Manolan's Fury on three members. Locked up by the Glacier as well. Comboed. And down comes the appraisals. Rat Tanzi able to pick up a kill, but Arad in trouble here. Going to get taken out as well. Two for one. Apex 47 goes down. Turtle still on the map of Tianzi's. And that spot, Banana might try to engage onto this, but Rose is there to back him up. Banana might have to back off. Alien now rotating up as well. Rosa with the Meteor looking for the next target. Going to move back with Tianzi, though. I mean, both teams are being very patient here. Like each team are just, they're just taking as much as they possibly can. The turtle doesn't go to anybody, which is wild. And not only that, they rotated EXP and gold lane at the minute mark, but. Ooh, nice time offended. Followed up by the meteor. A lot of damage on Okta. The passive does proc. Okta, though, gonna go down. Able to get a quick freeze on Apex 47 to buy Brusco. A little bit of time there. But still, Fireflux taking banana. the lead here. Banana trying Sitting to get out, the hanging out, <laughs> waiting yeah. for a backline rush there, and that's where you know I feel like Alien's gonna do great against the front line of RQ Hoshi, to where has Banana is gonna do amazing to the back line of Fireflux, and Ooh. which one's gonna be more important? Oh, a lot of trouble oh, for Rosa. Banana looking for the final hit, able to find it. They're now taking a lot of damage from the Blaze Duet. Skylar comes in as well. Up at the turtle, though. Alien able to take out Brusco. Turtle did go to the side of Fireflux. The rat finds Tienzi, though. But now a rat in a little bit of trouble. Alien on the chase. <laughs> Should be able to catch up. But no, getting burned and slowed. A rat <laughs> able to get away. Banana. Banana 402 <laughs> just absolutely decimating Fireflux's back line. I think paired with Skylar there, they, they knew that they could rely on their team 
to just kind of take take it at the turtle, right? And then they did it, right? And kind of taking a look at some of the items. The biggest thing that we are seeing is Skylar has that, that Demon Hunter sword picked up right. So that's going to be a devastating pick for the side of uh, Fire Flux just because they are a bit tanky. Apex might not be able to play as aggressive as they were. This is, uh, this is getting into the early, early mid game. And I think we're going to see some crazy plays coming up soon. I mean, it's 7-7. Seven, seven. Gold is still at pretty much an even. It is starting to tip a bit more into the hands of Fireflux to about 2,000. It's kind of bouncing mm -hmm. between 1 and 2,000. But still, that is nothing huge. Fireflux does take the first tower of the game on the top side. RQ Hoshi, they are going to have a decent spike. And you're right about Banana. He's still 4-0 and 2. And I'm excited to see how it's going to move forward the more he's able to kind of participate in these big skirmishes. Fireflux already Conceal grouping play. up. Here comes a concealed play. Looking for a target here. They do have the vision onto Skylar here. Apex 47 Ooh. trying to find one. But Skylar able to get away. That was a good zone by uh, Brusco there. Again, right now, Fireflux really has to protect their back line, right? Because Rosa's been caught twice already by Banana, which is huge for the side of RRQ. So I think they they have to maybe play a little bit more together, which I think at this point they're getting there, right? Uh, being the first Lord, I feel like this fight's going to be about a 50-50, but... Again, it could be anybody's game as Fireflux has the damage. Like, Ooh. look at Navaria, even though it's 1 2. Rosa still yeah, but doing look insane. A, look at Banana. Burn. Look at Banana. Look at Banana. Ooh. Hiding in the top bush, Ooh. looking for the back line flank again. Finally does show face. I don't know if Alien was able to see him there. I think so. Gonna check those bushes, make sure it's safe for the rest of the team. But Banana's not leaving that lane, and Fireflux is going to have to be careful about oh it. Brusco, though, going to get him offended in. Chip down from Alien. Will go down. Alien able to pick up the kill, but the Lord oh! falls, and Rad is able to take it. A beautiful steal. Banana trying to get out of town quick with the Electo final blow as the rest of Fireflux collapses on top of Arad. Arad in between Look three members. Going to do as much as he can. But while this is happening, you're right. Skylar taking a tower in the boss side. RRQ macroing up the map. Macroing it up and taking the Lord, which is Oof. huge. Okta in a little bit of trouble. Apex on the hunt. I don't think Skylar Okta stays is catching those meteors. Rosa <laughs> is just target locked onto Okta right now. I think the past three or four meteors Rosa has thrown out in a team fight have landed directly onto Okta. Yeah, I, and again, Rosa's done this before with the Navaria, so the aim is just amazing in the prediction from Fireflux at this point. They're going to do whatever they possibly can to keep this mid turret, which is, I think, going to be key, right? Because that's the that's the one thing that's going to keep them uh, apart from each other. They are winning in team fights, so they just need to secure neutral objectives. Are you looking to scale at this point? They need to take as much as they possibly can. If they can get a pick here they might be able to clean up all tier one towers and maybe take a couple tier two and here's the thing even with fireflux losing out on some of these neutral objectives they have still kept the gold lead for a while they're finally falling behind by a hundred gold but still that is not a lot and both the XP laners are going to be a huge threat to the other team. We have 4-0 and 5 on Alien. We have 4-0 and 2 on Banana. Taking a look at the gold laner, Skylar, though, still has not taken a, a single death, the opposite of Sunshine, who has. That is also going to start to become a major play in this. The more Skylar can just farm up and be comfortable on his, the like, patience. signature hero Claude, it's definitely going to become an issue. They're reading it so well. Fireflux is so good at controlling and zoning the map out. Like that, that is what what I love to see from teams. Like it's like a like a an octagon. If you just constantly keep phasing out parts of the land of the dawn and the river, you'll understand kind of where someone is at. And Fireflux is doing so good at reading the map and understanding where Banana is at. Because we can tell. I mean, Banana loves the patient plays to wait for the flank and i love that fireflux is now responding to what banana is bringing to them yeah but they're gonna have to start responding to the map control from rq hoshi as well yes fireflux does great in kind of controlling the fights but i feel like when it comes to overall macro rq is definitely chewing up these turrets right now has taken everything Ooh. on both off lanes but fireflux has done well 
at defending that mid lane. And as long as they do that, it will kind of keep RQ's rotations in check a bit. There's still this bottleneck that both teams have to move through if they want to get to the other side of the map. Lord going to be up now. Fireflux take control of the pit up first. Yeah, and I feel like that's their ideal goal, right? If they're not able to win in team fights into the early right now, let Fireflux do that, right? We'll, we'll take other things. Like, you can have a couple kills. It's not going to really win the game. Sunshine we got the Apex. eyes on the prize. In the boss side, Sunshine oh, and Apex. Knows. Sunshine pokes face. Banana is like, no, 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 no. I know you got someone else with you, man. We're not going to go for that one, but Rosa <laughs> is able to get vision on the team. Arad and Tienzi once again at it. Can Arad cop the steal again? Cop the feel again on this Lord. Oh, God. Fireflux. <laughs> All five members here now. Banana finally rotating up. The Lord is low. Might be too late to the party. And the Lord goes down. Yeah! Arad able to take it. Brusco now looking for a set. The Glacier comes down and Apex 40 falls with it. Fireflux on the run this time. RQ got what they came for. They take control of the Lord and they take control of the map. They do, and they want to take more as well. They're still showing such great aggression. I'm so surprised that Fireflux wants to take the 50-50s on the Lord. I mean, this is the second time they've lost it. So let's see what they can do. Again, they held really well on the first Lord. Can they hold really well on the second Lord as RQ is barreling down the mid and the left lane? Oof. Arad is just vicious with these retries right now. Takes the purple away from Fireflux. <laughs> takes the Lord. His timing is impeccable right now. Apex 47 is coming out with a conceal play to get a slightly different position. The Glacier comes down. Nobody going to get stunned up from it. The Lord finally makes the crash. Fireflux loses their first inhibitor to the game. RQ claims that they're going to move on to the mid side now. Take that tier two as well. They are picking Fireflux apart down to the bones. They are. They're playing them textbook at this point. And we can already see, man, Skylar with the aggression here. RQ, right? They're doing really well. They're scaling a lot. Skylar, 11, Whoa. almost 12K gold. Are they going to attempt to go the for it? Damage <laughs> from Skylar there. We haven't even really even... We haven't even seen Skylar get super involved yet. That's the big kicker here. He's just been farming and farming. And RQ has still been able to handle these fights very well. We haven't even seen like an insane black line blazing duet or anything Ooh. yet. They He's know. just been kind of chipping away. And they now know. he is going to come in. Brusco there with an Owens Fury. Able to get a big knockup. Okta finds the kill. Apex 47 now on the run. Alien holds down the front side. But RQ took down one. And that's all they needed to advance this fight. Skylar going to move on to the orange buff, just patrolling the jungle right now, looking for angles, looking for flanks, and that's how RQ has continuously won these team fights. Definitely a huge play there by RQ. The patience behind Brusco there just to give vision and then the combo with Skylar, they just they couldn't even survive. Again, it, it's a little a little risky to take, but not not devastating, right? I mean, you got 31, 30 seconds till the next Lord, so everybody will be available. Uh, I just think it's it's one of those things that uh, you're able to kind of feel out how RQ has control over the map, and you can see they're keeping them at bay. Skylar has a full set, Malefic Roar. And the attack speed is definitely picked up. If they can shut down Alien on Fireflux, I think that's kind of their... If they if they do that, then it, I think it's GG's, but you never know. All right, let's see, though. Fireflux, we've seen them put their big boy pants on in crucial <laughs> Lord fights. You know, you mentioned earlier that maybe they shouldn't go for the 50-50. Maybe they should try to take a fight before the Lord pit. Brad already knows that's what they want. And now they're going to move on to Apex 47. Arad takes a quick turn. Brusco unable to land the Minoan's Fury. Fireflux baits that out. And the they still door. all got their ultimates. Yes, there is a backdoor possibility from Banana. But it seems that Fireflux smells something in the water. They're going to send Sunshine back to help define the lane. Oh. Alien able to take down Brusco. It's now 5v4. Does Fireflux want to commit? They have to send back Sunshine. But Tianzi finally takes it. And he rad. Going to probably fall here. Goes down Alien. Picking up the kill. RQ Hoshi now falling behind. And this is what I meant. Fireflux, when the time comes down to it, they know how to take the fight to their enemies. 
They do. And see, this is what I like, right? I said in the very beginning of the game that Fireflux really needed to bait out utility from RQ, but Alien! The damage game put down. Skyler, chasing him down. Uh-oh. Sunshine <laughs> Apex like, no, 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 no. Uh, you better back up. But still, the damage, Skyler's going to be probably one of the only people that can really just like 1v1 Alien right now, which is insane because Alien is bursting down most of our Q, well, shredding down most of our Q. But the damage from Skyler right now could be getting out of control. Yeah, I feel like RQ is going to be able to defend this Lord probably with no problem. I mean, they have a lot of their tier three still, but we'll see if Fireflux wants to fully engage here. And yeah, they got to watch out for the offended. Lord is able to encroach onto the base. Skylar's finally showed up. We'll be able to chip Ooh. it down. Fireflux not going to overextend and Banana. keep our eyes on Banana because he is everywhere disrupting waves, slowing down the pushes from Fireflux. He's doing his job very well. They are trying to find <laughs> they, they banana. Were, they were checking they were every this. bush. They're kicking doors. <laughs> Open I'm up, FBI. <laughs> they were like, where is banana? I'm tired of this. But again, I mean, that that play by banana forced Fireflux to then give up control of the, the you know, the frontal of RRQ. Now, the biggest thing I was kind of saying is that Fireflux needs to continue to bait these utilities out, but they have to keep, they have to be on their toes here, though, because we've constantly seen Banana almost attempt a backdoor. Though the Lord is on the right-hand side this time around, we are seeing that the backdoor potential is a little bit harder but that could be a possibility for RQ at this point. Fireflux, just keep baiting out utilities. Do not take a 50-50 Lord unless you really have control over that map. I mean, with, with, the, with the Lord being on the bot side here in the long lane being in advantage of Fireflux, it does kind of help them, right? RQ is going to have to be a bit more stressed about getting up to that top lane and clean those waves. Luckily, they do have Banana, who's been extremely mobile, extremely proactive, but it's definitely something we got to keep our eyes on. As long as Fireflux kind of lets that lane stay pushed on RQ side, it's going to be very helpful to them when it comes down to these Lord fights. Exactly. I feel like it, it's key that RRQ has such great ability, but I, I do also think they need to execute it, as, especially, you know, maybe try to reset the Lord a couple times or try to get it out of Firefox's hands. And I think that's where they're struggling at this point is that they're 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 all about the split push and they really haven't had a full engage at a Lord. And maybe if they had a full engage at the Lord, RQ could be on the winning side here. But Fireflux kind of has them pressed back against the wall. Uh, Fireflux, you know, in past international events, Wolf coined the, the meta for Fireflux. He calls it the <laughs> Turkish delight. You know, you oh, got gosh. the Ube strat coming from uh, Blacklist. And we have the Turkish delight from Fireflux. And I always like to kind of call, like, it's very layered. The way that they take these fights is very layered sometimes. They're very good at meshing everybody's ultimates together. Now Alien going to come in onto a rat. Oh, Apex this time going to blow his ult a little bit too early. Line. But still, look at the damage. Oh, into the back line, the Petrify. Banana able to find Rosa. Sunshine goes down as well. Brusco is the only one falling on the side of RQ, and now RQ is collapsing. Claude goes for the split push, and that was all without him. Skyler now going to get involved into this fight. He still has the Blazing Duet, but doesn't even need to use it. Apex 47 is going nowhere. RRQ Hoshi decimate Fireflux in that fight. They've still got Tienzi and Alien. RRQ go say, no, end. we don't want no Lord. We're going to go for the game here. We're going to go for the finish. They're going to collapse down in the boss side. Skyler able to use the Blazing Duet, clear up all of these minions, and look at the damage on to Alien. Alien still trying to survive. Skyler repositions. The Glacier comes down. Alien not getting away from that one. Tienzi is going to be next on the chopping block. The Electo final blow to final blow him out. And now Fireflux <laughs> will go down. RQ Hoshi taking game number one. Game number one. What a play 
That was insane. From the, oh my God, my throat. From RQ, they definitely destroyed it there. And that was kind of the backdoor. It was a, it was an attempt at a backdoor that really forced them out of their comfort zone from controlling the Lord. So a really great play by RQ.